The title of today's message is Dude Perfect. So, how many of you know what Dude Perfect is? Raise your hand. Yeah, everybody under 40. So, there we go. Um, so, Dude Perfect is one of the, it's like the second biggest uh, sports website on YouTube. And it's in the, at least the top, I think still top 20 easily on YouTube all around. And it's five buddies from Frisco, Texas, who were roommates at A&M. Oh, great. Now people, people with indigestion out there whooping. So, um, so they created this Dude Perfect, uh, and it's mostly videos depicting various tricks and shots and stunts. Um, let me just read you some of these are pretty extraordinary. 2009, the group set the world record for the longest basketball shot after shooting from the fourth deck of Kyle Field, uh, which is down there in that same area. Uh, in October uh, 2010, they extended their record with a cross tower shot from a height of 66 meters or 216 feet. The basket was located 150 feet away from the tower's base. So they're shooting baskets. Just, and if you've ever, have anybody ever seen this stuff? Raise your hand if you've seen it. Like, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, in March 2011, they officially broke their record again with a shot from the top of Reliant Stadium, which remained in the air. The ball remained in the air for 5.3 seconds. That's how far the shot was. In January 2014, the group successfully attempted a shot from the 561-foot-tall Reunion Tower with two of the guys holding the basket at the base of the tower. So why are they successful? They're not successful because they show videos trying to make the basket, although that is a part of the video, right? They shoot it, they miss. They shoot it, they miss. They shoot it, they miss. And you think, oh my gosh, they're never going to make it. But the reason you go to watch the videos is eventually they do what? They shoot it and they make the basket. And we go, oh my gosh, Reunion Tower, Reliant Stadium, what else are they going to come up with? And so they make money, they have an audience. Because we don't just like people trying, we like people hitting the shot. So the nightmare of life is that without Christ, you will never make the shot no matter how hard you try. You're going to shoot, you're going to shoot, you're going to shoot, and you're never going to make it. Matthew 5, 48. Go there. Matthew 5, 48 says this, Therefore, talking to us, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So what is God's requirement? Make the shot. You say, I can't make the shot. So basically God's saying, dude, perfect. You've got to be perfect. In fact, you've got to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And it doesn't get any more perfect than that. Now go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verse, let's go down to verse 20. Then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast you out, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Now let me read this again. It starts out with blessed. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast out your name as evil. So when they speak your name, they're referring to your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, 
for indeed your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. So let me, let me tell you something about taking a deep breath and saying, okay, Lord, I'll take a stand for you. It, it may not be perfect, but I'm going to take a stand for you. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen if you take a stand. And if you speak the truth, even if you speak it in love, you're going to get clobbered. And you cannot be shocked. Stop being shocked when you take a stand and you say, well, they're not nice. They weren't nice. They're supposed to be nice. There's no nice. Especially when you speak what God tells you to speak. They're going to come at you. Now, not only does it say, you know, well, hang in there. It doesn't even say hang in there. What does it say? Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For indeed your reward in, is great in heaven. Now, we're going to, this is going to get interesting today because it's gotten interesting lately. So maybe we should pray again, but I've already prayed, so here we go. Um, we're, we're losing our minds. Okay? The devil's a snake. And so what he does is he, get a, he gets us so wrapped around our own little axle on our own little boat that we've decided we are so right and everyone else is so wrong that we start hating each other. Someone proudly boasted, uh, my wife was telling me someone boasted they had gotten rid of 200 people, followers on Facebook. Oh, brrr. And I don't say this casually. So what is that? To hell with them? Oh, they don't agree with me. So I'm just going to, they're gone. I'm looking for these verses. And I've got little children in the room mocking me. I went, oh, and they went, oh. We need to get that nursery back. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. We should have that recorded. Okay, so, so keep reading with me. Verse 24. Woe to you who are rich. You have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. So give in contrast, back and forth. Woe to you when all... Now look at this one, verse 26. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. When everybody speaks well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. So a prophet gets up and says something, and oh, that was wonderful. Now I get this, and I kind of I do rejoice and I'm exceeding glad all these things. When I get pushed back over the truth, I it's not worth it's backfiring on you. If you come after me for speaking the truth, it don't work. Right? That does not, it does not slow me down. Now, you say, well, dude, you're supposed to be perfect. I am not perfect. I am taking shots. I'm trying to make the shots. I'm trying to speak the truth in love. I will not get all of it right all of the time. I am not, I am reading scripture. I am not speaking scripture. Let's just keep reading. Thank God we have a book to read out of too, by the way. Verse 27, but I say to you who hear, if you're listening, now look at these words, love your enemies. So even if you here in the room or beyond say, well, I hate you because you said such and such, you have no verses for that. You got nothing. Well, it sounds like you're angry. Sounds like you're angry. Well, you should love me. You should love me. And who said, I don't love you? Um, now, this is intense, so just, just listen. I'm, dis I'm discipling right now a young African-American guy, and he came to see me the other day. And we're sitting there in our weekly deal. We spend time together, had a great conversation. And I said, you know, you understand that I am a white supremacist insurrectionist Nazi.
but here I am with you. So what am I doing here with you? I'm secretly conniving some way to destroy your life because you're black. It's not true. And he looked at me and I looked at him like, dude, you know I love you. That's not what this is. You can't paint everybody into some corner on either side of the equation. And even if you can come up with something that you vehemently disagree with that someone says and borderline hate what they believe, you can't hate the person. You got zero verses for hating the person. Let me read it. Love your enemies. So you say, well, I don't feel like I'm their enemy. I feel like they think I'm their enemy. I, I don't see them as my enemy. But they think that you are their enemy. Your job is to love them anyway. Well, I don't want to love them. I want to be upset. You got no verses for that. I'll talk to you all day long if you bring me your verses. You got emotion, you got opinion, you just got something you made up or you feel strongly about, bring verses. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. So now on top of them hating you, being your, you know, you think you're the enemy, they hate you. What does he say to do? Do good to them. If they curse you, bless those who curse you. There's nothing about this that's, you, that's our natural tendency. You cannot do this. This is the kind of perfection God demands. You cannot do this without God. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. So what are we supposed to be doing? Loving, doing good, blessing, and praying. Is that what we're doing? Or are we running our thumbs on some social media, deleting people, attacking people? You're crazy. It's not about attacking people. Somehow we are supposed to be salt and light in the world and we're supposed to stand for truth and do these things with people who see us as enemies, hate us, curse us, um, and, and we're supposed to do good to them anyway. Pray for them if, if they spitefully use us and be smiling all the way through it instead of, oh, that's not right, that's not fair, I'm gonna get back at them. And how's that working out for anybody? Keep reading. To him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks you. And from him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want, now look at these verses. This is straight up scripture. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. Golden rule. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Is that how we're treating people in the world today? You say, well, yeah, the people I like, I'm treating that way. Anybody can do that, and we'll get to that in a minute in Scripture. Well, duh. Oh, I've only got this pool of people who are just like me, come from where I come from, think what I think, everything like me. I've gotten rid of all those other people. <sighs> Keep reading. Just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Like, okay, so how hard is that? You just love the people that love you. Do you love the people that hate you, that don't love you, that curse you, that despitefully use you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? Like, okay, what's the difference? You're lending, you want something back. For even sinners lend to sinners to receive much back. He goes at it again, verse 35. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. Why does he say we'll be sons of the Most High? Because we look like his kids finally. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful 
just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will, will it be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So what are we dishing out, and why are we shocked that that's what comes back? You say, but the world is, do forget the world. We're not, we're not supposed to be the world. Romans 3.23, some of you know it by heart. Um, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So again, God says, dude, perfect. But then he also says, dude, you're not perfect. All have sinned. What does it mean to fall short of the glory of God? Every time you throw the ball, you miss. It falls short. You never make it. And you will never make it without him. So this life that's been described that we just went through Luke 6 on, you say, well, that's crazy stuff. I don't want to live that life. I want to be angry. I want to be mean. I want to retaliate. I want to, I want to get revenge. I want to show them. I want to delete them. You just got no verses for it. Now, if, you, if all you got is you, that's you. But if we claim to be the sons of the Most High, then we have to live a different life. We have to be different people. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I've read this repeatedly recently, I think. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, go down to verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Okay? So, the dude that's perfect is Jesus. Knew no sin. But he made him sin, he who knew no sin, God made him sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So now we can be made perfect, we can be made, made holy, we can be made complete because of what Jesus did, but not without him. It will never work without Jesus. <sighs> Ephesians chapter 4. Go down to verse 11. Talking about the church, Paul here to Ephesus. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what purpose? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to what? A perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up. So no longer children grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Okay, so if it's working, then all of us together come together to the fullness, to the full the stature, the measure, the perfect man, the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. So then we together look like, sound like our Christ, his body, letting him be himself in and through us. And is that what's happening? Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And you have to go back and read the first part of this chapter. I'm jumping in at verse 12. Paul's talked about all his credentials. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. Now look, that is all of us. If you're a believer, you are not claiming. I am not claiming perfection. I have been declared holy, blameless, chosen, all of these things. And one day when I'm glorified, glorification in heaven when I get there, then all that will be a fact. But I am in process being sanctified like you are. So we have to be patient with one another. People too many times pick churches the way they get rid of wives. I'm not happy anymore. This isn't working out for me. I have the right to be happy. I'm going somewhere else. 
Now, let me, I'm, you know, I'm pretty passionate. I get that. Oh, you should turn it down. Look, the way the world is right now, you can pick a church with any oven setting you want. Oh, 350 is too hot for me. I believe I'm going with a 125. Sweetheart, look up 125 on, you know, on the search. Oh, that'll be, that'll be all fluffy and nice, and no one's going to say anything to, to, to ruffle us. And Jesus, right? Oh, I like that. No challenge, no calling you out, no pushing you forward. Yeah, but you're, you're like 350, 375, right? And I'm, and I'm trying to be more gentle. I, guess, I don't know if I am or not. I guess I kind of am, right? You know. I know maybe I'm supposed to and speak the truth in love. I just read it, so I'm trying. So look, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. That's not going to help you. Right? Where, where do you want to get? Where do you want to go? I'm not going to look at anybody. I don't care what color you are, where you're from. I'm not going to look at anybody and go, oh, man. Oh, you're from there? You're that color? Oh, man. You got, you got no chance. Because my book says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things passed away. All things are new. Who's going to stop you with God inside you anyway? Oh, but you can't because... You'll never amount to anything. You're from, you're from there. You, you were told that, and you can't overcome that. Stop listening to what the world's telling you and see what God says about you in his word. And let him decide where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do. Oh, Lord, help. Let's see, are we really going there? Okay. All right, now just listen. And, and this is probably going to make my life even worse. Same black young man that I'm discipling sitting there, and I asked him the other day. Now, and, and please look, if you're listening and you're about to click, you're just waiting to get click. Get away from him. Stop listening. Just hear me out. Especially if you think I love you and you claim to love me. Hear me out. I asked him this question. NFL, NBA, college football, pick a sport, those sports especially. I said, why is it that most of the players are black? Now, you really think I've lost my mind now. And he looked at me and he said, are there more of them? Good answer. But I said, no, here's the answer. Because they're the best. Oh, no, no, that's not why. There's quotas. 100% quotas? <laughs> now, there was a time in this, in this country, a Hank Aaron who were... It's despicable what happened to black people in sports, in general. But things have to be changing or you can't have entire NBA, NFL teams almost predominantly all black. Oh, well, they're just trying to be nice to black people. Let me tell you something about people that make money and want to win. They don't care about that stuff. They want the fastest, baddest horse they can find. And if that is you, they will put you in. And as it turns out, because that black young man against all, ob all obstacles, rose, 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 and he's in the game. And you can't tell me it's any other reason. Because if you do, now you're in trouble. Either they're the best or they're not. Just be the best. Well, but I can't be the best. Who told you that? Okay, well, that, that's out. So, there's just, the, the enemy tells us lies. You say, yeah, but there's still obstacles. Go over the obstacles. I got three daughters. Do you think for a second, I, every night praying with my daughter, said to them, now, sweetie, let me tell you how the world is. You're a woman. 
And so you won't be able to do things. They're just things women don't get to do. You won't be able to go. It's just how it works. Sorry. I didn't tell my girls that. You know what I told my girls? You can be whatever God wants you to be. That's what you can be. Now, why would you tell a kid anything different than that? And if you do, it's a lie. Don't tell them what they can't do. I didn't tell them you could be whatever you want to be. That's not true. But you can be and you can do whatever God wants you to do if you'll get out of the way and let him do it. Okay, let's find some more verses really quick. So Paul there in Philippians 3, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, you know, I am not claiming, dude, perfect. I got challenges. I get passionate. You say, well, but you went out of bounds there. Okay, be merciful. You know, being a pastor is a lot like being a parent. There is really not much encouragement and appreciation until your kids grow up. So, when someone does have a beef with me, something I said, the way I said it, do you know the ones that I listen to? The ones I can go back through my emails and my text messages and see encouragement and appreciation because those are the adults in the room. And I value those opinions. Patrick and I had a pretty intense conversation the other day, three hours, very intense. And we ended up holding hands on our knees by the couch because we are brothers and I love him and I respect what he thinks and what he says to me. He has earned the right. So I do listen and I am not perfect, but I'm trying. But I will tell you this, uh, someone sent me a deal about as a spoof on a pastor praying fervently for his, go his sermon ghostwriter. Oh, God, help, help him, whoever the guy's name, you know, it's a spoof. Hope he comes up with something good from you for me this week to say. I'm not getting this stuff off online, right? I have, to, I have to chew this up. I write it down. This isn't random. I am passionate. If you don't want passion, there's plenty of people that'll just stare at you. Won't challenge you with anything, won't push you forward, won't tell you sometimes you have to let go of something you've held on to because you're not going to get anywhere holding on to that. So let me try to clear some stuff up. Um, I may preach something that people don't want to hear, number one. They may misunderstand what I'm trying to say. Or they just don't agree, or I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm happy to admit that I'm wrong. In a recent sermon, I hit abortion pretty hard. Now let me read this. I am unapologetically pro-life. I express my convictions with intensity, to say the least. I can apologize for any insensitivity in presenting that message, but that will not change my conviction. I try to explain how abhorrent abortion is from a biblical perspective. Now, there was some confusion about this, so here we go. You do not have to be a Christian to be pro-life. Does everybody understand that? You can be an atheist and still say you shouldn't be killing children before they're born, number one. Number two, all Christians are not necessarily pro-life. I think that's crazy town, but okay, right? You say, whoa, but you're judging. No, let me give you the next point. Moving from darkness to light, if you become a Christian, now listen closely. 
if you become a Christian and you are moving from darkness to light in the process of sanctification that takes time and patience, okay? So if you take an atheist who becomes a Christian, it's going to take them a while to move on a continuum to other, other positions about biblical things. They won't just overnight go, boom, I get it. I'm, you know, they're going to struggle and it's going to take some time. I do believe that if a Christian continues to grow spiritually, they will eventually come to the realization that an unborn child is a person. And that to take that life instead of in, inside or outside of the womb is murder. Now you say, that's your opinion. You may be right. You don't have to hate me for my opinion. I don't hate you for your opinion. Oh, I'm going to cancel him. That ain't right. Okay, get, what's your verse for that? You disagree. You're at a place where you don't see it that way. I'm not throwing you, throwing you away because of that. I just believe that eventually on the continuum, the Holy Spirit will say it's a person. Because Scripture says it's a person. I've also had people say this to me. If God wanted to do something about slavery, he would do something. You don't want to run that argument too far. Because God dealt with Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts. He did something about it. They dropped dead. Do you want, do I want God dealing with my sin that way? I do not. I want mercy. So how does God change some things in the world? Sometimes, bam, he does something. You go back and read the story of, uh, of Jonah. There's an entire city with a king that could have repented earlier if Jonah hadn't been an idiot. They're sitting there in their sin waiting to repent. Anybody heard about Jonah? Where, where's Jonah? They don't know they're even waiting for him. But he shows up and they repent. Why did they repent? Because Jonah called them out. Well, I don't want to be called out. You're pushing it too far. Now, the last thing, and, and I really, I, I almost want to get down on my knees and whisper this. And I don't know, I don't even understand completely where the rub was on this, but this is one of the main things. I believe, I believe that abortion is worse than any number of things you can come up before it. Okay? You say, well, we're not stacking them. I'm just telling you, a nation that continues to kill its unborn population is not going to survive. Any more than a nation that thinks they can own people would do well very long. Look at the damage that did. And how did they pull off slavery? They dehumanized a slave and said, you can own it. How do you pull off abortion? You dehumanize a fetus and say, it's not a person. And then you can do what you want to with it. So one second you're showing me a sonogram all excited about, look, we're having a baby. No, you're not. You're having a fetus. Because someone else will show you the same sonogram and go, look, we're going we're gonna to kill it. It doesn't make any sense. Now, am I saying it calmly enough? It doesn't make, your, your head's still going to spin off its shoulders because if you're locked up on something, but it, it can't be worse than this because this is the atrocity. I personally cannot come up with anything that we are doing to each other, humanly speaking, than killing somebody before they even see the light of day. You don't agree and you hate me? Good luck. How is that going to work out for you? It is possible that I am right. Not because I'm right, but because it's in Scripture. What if I am right and the Scripture's right? You're wrong. Would you ever consider that? I recommend you climb in your closet and say, Lord, why am I so angry? Right? Why am I so angry at so many people? Because as it turns out, the same book says that we wrestle not with flesh and blood. It's not people. It's principalities, it's powers. 
Last night, before I come to do this, I was attacked all night long in dreams, calling on the name of Jesus to protect me. And if you've ever had dreams like that, they are not pleasant. Because sometimes you, you can't, you, you struggle to get his name out, and you know, even in the dream, if I can just get that name out, it'll all be okay. And then you try to scream out, Jesus, and you're okay. So I fought my way here. Did you? You want to chew on me? If you've been praying for me and encouraging me, I'll take it all day long. You just want to take a shot, take a shot. But dude, it's probably not going to be very perfect without all that other stuff. <sighs> let's do a few more. People like scripture, so let's read some scripture. Colossians 1. Um... 28, talking about Jesus, Paul writing to Colossae, him, Jesus, we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So what, what is my responsibility? Um, you, you know, I can tell you every week, which I do, I love you. I try to show you that. It may not be very perfect, but I hope nobody questions whether you're loved by this church, by this pastor, by these elders, by this leadership. So we love you. We want the best for you. We are trying to do everything we can to gently challenge you and move you so that you end up this, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Here, he, here they are. Here she is. Here he is. We did what you asked us to do to teach them, to challenge them, to love them, to encourage them, and get them to this place. Here they are. Colossians 3, 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Now look what he, they're holy and beloved. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Look at those words. These are not power, I'm the baddest, I'm going to kick your whatever, right? These are tender mercies. Now you say, well, that's how you should be with me. That's how you should be with me. I'm going to another church. Let me tell you something about church jumping. You have no more right to, to pick another church than you have to just go randomly pick another wife. You don't just pick churches. You should be praying about where God wants you. And if he puts you somewhere, until he says you can go, you don't go. Well, I don't like it here. Who asked you? I belong to him. I've been in churches myself before where I used to beg God, can I leave now, can I leave now? And you know what I got? No, you stay. I said, yes, sir, thank you, sir. And you do what you're told. Oh, I don't, I don't have, I, I can do what I want to do. And that's a child. That's a little kid who has not grown up. That's not any maturity. Well, now you're judging me. No, you can spot a kid anywhere. Let's see. Skip that one. Go to James 1. James 1, verse 1. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. 
Now you back in, you say, dude, I want to be perfect. How do you get there? When you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So you go, okay, great, here's a trial. That means I'm going to have patience when I get done with this. And then when patience has its perfect work, I'm going to be perfect and complete, lacking nothing, nothing missing. Wouldn't that be nice? Then you start making those shots that you could never make before. Now read James chapter 2, verse 13 with me. And I would like, if for anybody still listening in here and beyond, now I'd like you to really think about what I'm about to read you. James 2, 13. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So let me tell you how this works out for people who have no mercy. They get no mercy. So if you are out there dishing out merciless judgments, canceling, getting rid of people, angry, running your thumbs, and then it comes back on you, do not be shocked. Judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Show mercy. You say, but I don't like that person. It, you, you just got no verses for that. They hate me. Oh, we got verses for that. I don't want to bless them. I don't want to pray for them. I don't want to love them then you're just going to miss the rest of your life. If you say, Lord, I don't want to, but that's what you say to do, so I'm going to get out of the way and let you love them, let you pray for them, let you bless them, let you be you in me and through, and through me. Last one, 1 John chapter 3. Verse 1. Behold, look, look what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. What in the world? He loved me so much that he figured out a way to get me in his family and be called his child. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. The only dude perfect was Jesus, but if you get you some Jesus, then you drop dead one day and you look at heaven and go, dude, perfect. And you look at him and you go, dude, perfect. And then he looks at you and says, dude, perfect. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you do. And I pray for anybody wrestling with the truth, um, maybe locked up on some issue, something that has got them trapped from the past, from something that they've just valued even more than truth. And they're in process, and you love them, I love them. Um, just in process, Lord. Help us shed what is not of you and press on toward the prize. You are the prize. I know this stuff is intense, Lord. Um, you know it's intense. It's not random. But Father, we, we are called to live perfect lives. And without you, that is not even possible. And with you, we challenge. We are challenged. But our lives should be different, Lord. What the world does, we should know what to do by just doing the exact opposite. I pray primarily, Lord, today for people who have not even been born spiritually yet. Um, and they would say, God, I'm missing. I can't make it work. Every shot I miss. No matter what I do, it never, it, I never hit the mark. I have sinned. I have fallen short. But I understand now that you love me. And you sent your son Jesus 
to come here, born of a virgin, live a sinless life, die on the cross, shed his blood, be buried and raised from the dead to purchase eternal and abundant life for me. I accept that eternal life, that gift. I believe that you were raised from the dead. I accept the forgiveness of my sins. Come live in me, through me, change me. Show me how to live this life because the life I've been living does not work. Thank you for loving me, for saving me, for being patient, for being merciful. And Father, for believers um, trying to find their way, again, Lord, we just pray that we would be willing to climb in closets, so to speak, and say, Lord, okay, is it me? Is it something? I'm, I'm angry. I'm, ups, I'm caught up in something. I'm, I've picked a side. I've backed into my corner, whatever corner that is. And I've lost my opportunity to be salt and light primarily to the people who need you the most that sometimes turn out to be enemies of the cross. Help me not make them my enemies. Show me how to love them, to pray for them, to bless them, no matter what comes my way. Father, you're the best. Wow, what a process. Again, I pray for the church universal, but I pray for this church. And clearly we must be close to something because the enemy is trying so hard to blow this thing up. So help people hold primarily to you and not make rash decisions, uh, jump to conclusions, and make sure all of us have verses to back up what we stand up for. Sure, it will be nice to get home, Lord. Um, still so weird to me to miss somebody I've never seen. But we miss you. And our prayer is even so, come Lord Jesus. But until then, help us be faithful to always be ready to give a reason for the hope that's within us. And you are that hope. And it's in your precious name, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.